Please turn with me to the New Testament when we're reading in Matthew chapter 5. This is the beginning of the very famous Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave to the disciples. He is drawing their attention to the fact that God's way and man's way are quite different. Now this is a very famous passage and many aspects of it are frequently quoted but I guess the most famous part is the Beatitudes which are the leading section of it. So we'll read them this morning from Matthew chapter 5. Seeing the multitudes he went up on a mountain and when he was seated his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them saying Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And may the Lord bless these words to us. What we have here then is lots of separate statements and you can take them individually but they come together to form a description of what the man of God is like. So we have the Beatitudes associated with the poor in spirit, those who mourn, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness those who are merciful, those who are pure in heart, those who are peacemakers, and those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. These are the ones who are like God. The Lord Jesus himself fulfills all of this. First of all, who is he talking to? Well, it says he sees the multitude. And then he goes up onto a mountain and he's seated, his disciples come to him. So this is a message for the inner circle of those who seek God. It's not a message that is understood by the crowd that's going whichever way they want. But if you want to know God's way, then you'll climb the mountain to sit at his feet and listen and take heed to what he's saying in the thinking of the world if we go through these things people want power in this world they want possessions the kingdom of heaven is something that's not possessions in this world it is a different aspiration people want to be happy they don't want to mourn Uh, They don't want to get caught up in other people's troubles. They want to have a carefree life. They want to inherit the earth. They want to be in control of the situation here and be in charge of their own lives. They usually don't care for righteousness. They will uh, substitute righteousness for the lust of the flesh, enjoyment, fun. And similarly they will forfeit mercy on others because they want to keep things for themselves they want to make sure they get their pound of flesh and there's no fear of God in their eyes to see God isn't an aspiration rather they would want to keep the things that they can see with their natural eyes rather than having an aspiration to see God who is not visible in this world for no man has seen God so they don't want to be called the sons of God they are happy with their own name when it comes to persecution 
for righteousness sake. No, righteousness isn't the issue. They want us to be free of trouble. If that means being unrighteous, then they can do that. So the Beatitudes are a dramatic contrast that Jesus is making between the way of life that he is calling us to as believers and uh, the way of life that people in the world live. And the focus of it, of course, is first of all where our treasure is, whether it is the kingdom of heaven, which comes in twice, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, heaven is our home. But he also says, the meek shall inherit the earth. For God has also planned that after the resurrection, we shall live in the earth. And indeed, he will, at the end of the millennium, reform and make new heavens and new earth. In other words, a new created realm in which we will live in resurrected body, in physical bodies. They're not like our own body in the sense that they won't have sickness and sorrow. In that new world, there will be peace and joy. But it will be a world for us to live in. We've been made to live in a world and we shall inherit that which God has prepared for us. That is, those who are meek, those who don't seek now to inherit this earth, but rather seek righteousness. The contrast here is, what is the motivation for your life? Do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? Or are you hungering and thirsting for material possessions and uh, seeking to get them whichever way you can? If righteousness is your desire, then you will be satisfied. You will be filled. If mercy is your practice, then you will receive mercy. If purity is your ambition to be clean, you will be clean for God and you will see God. You will be fit for his presence. Psalm 24 asks the question, Who can ascend to the mountain of the Lord? And the answer comes back, He who has clean hands and a pure heart. So, may my aspiration and your aspiration be to see God and to keep ourselves pure and clean for Him. Jesus' chief characteristic is that He comes to make peace between God and men. He is the one mediator. He can make peace because he declares to us God's requirements and he pays the penalty, the price that is required for us to meet those requirements so that we may be reconciled with God. And now we've been charged with that message, be reconciled with God. But in all of this, God's people are going to be opposed in the world. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Not only do we hunger for righteousness, but when we hunger for righteousness, we get into trouble for it. In trouble by a world that does not want righteousness. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. Suddenly, Jesus turns it around and makes it personal. This is your situation. Your most advantageous situation is when you are reviled and persecuted and people make up all kinds of evil stories against you which are not true and they do it because you bear my name. So Jesus is urging us to understand our destiny as God's people and to look forward to the reward that will be given to those who faithfully follow the Lord in this present life. In this present life, there will be persecution, there will be opposition, there will be people speaking evil against us, there will be trouble on every side, but we are to be merciful, we are to mourn with those who mourn, we are to seek righteousness, we are to persist in doing it, knowing that in the end there will be a reward, there will be an inheritance, We will be sons of God. We shall see 
our God.